Now I'm going to introduce you the last speaker of the first afternoon session. Heli Kang will tell us AI basic. As soon as the video is ready, we are going to introduce Dr. Kang to you. Thank you for attending the International Copyright Technology Conference 2022. This presentation will talk about the AI-based generative model and copyright. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dong Kang. I got my PhD in AI and Robotics for Construction at the University of Manitoba in 2022. I am currently working as an AI scientist in Key AI. I also do volunteer work to spread the AI technology with NVIDIA for the university student. If you are interested in the AI workshop, please contact me. We have uh, uh, various uh, academic options. Anyway, uh, my research publication and my company work experience are highly focused on the computer vision field. For this reason, I would like to present a high-level view of the AI-based image generative model instead of a text generative model. After that, we will discuss the interesting examples cases between AI creators and copyright. I will skip the detail about the copyright law since uh, I am not a lawyer, but I try to explain about the case result as an AI scientist. I hope that attendants can get useful information from this presentation and find the future opportunities for it. Let's dive into the presentation. In 2022, AI is able to generate realistic images or videos from sentences. It is not just a simple face change like a deep fake. For example, with stable diffusion, even ordinary people can easily generate an artistic image based on the user's input sentence. There is a no required coding knowledge or paint skill. Also, Meta Research publishes the text-to-video AI. When a user enters a sentence, AI creates a video based on input sentence. In this way, we can easily produce various images or videos without more specialized skill. Uh, many professional artists said that the development of camera is the first momentum of the art. Before the development of camera, painter practiced the drawing realistic images. The more skilled painter, the more realistic the paintings. However, after the camera is developed, the characteristic of artist is changed. The painting skill becomes less important, and creativity is one of the most important aspects of the art. Now, I would like to say that the AI hit the second momentum in art history. AI can generate the multiple images which can overcome the human imagination. An artist just pick the best images among them and print it. For example, Jason Allen won the Colorado State uh, Fair. An image is generated by the Mid-Journey AI. We just print the image on the campus, canvas and submit the contest. This case is one of the cases that AI beat the human's creativity. And it, it is a little bit scary moment. However, uh, uh, let's see some behind the technology about this artwork. I will briefly explain about AI while avoiding a mathematical approaches 
as much as possible. Uh, for example, when we make the police AI, which can identify the fake money. Uh, in this case, we have a uh, input money image and AI give the result that it is a genuine or fake. To train this process, AI compares the prediction result and ground truth. This process is repeated when our police AI can classify that input data is, uh, is the real money or fake money. Compared to the previous police AI, Generative Adversarial Network, uh, which is called GAN, has a different structures. GAN is the you know, hot technology as an image generation model. Contrary to our previous police AI, it can be described as a counterfeiter. This algorithm is trying to make a fake money that looks real and compete with our previous police AI. Police AI is trying to identify this counterfeiter's money as a fake money. And if uh, these two AI you know, compete against each other and improve their performances, and one day, counterfeiters might be able to create the realistic money. That's the concept of the game. For the little bit fancy term, the training process of both model generator and discriminator is as follows. Before the first running, there is a probability distribution of the real data and probability distribution of the generator and the probability distribution of a discriminator. Discriminator determines how different the generator and the existing probability distribution are. And the generator modifies the generation model to deceive the discriminator according to real probability distribution. And ultimately, uh, as a process of reducing the difference between the probability distribution of generator and the probability distribution of the real data. Uh, I would like to say uh, one more time, the core concept of GAN is that algorithm reduce the difference between the probability distribution of the generator which is a counterfeiter and the probability distribution of real data which is a real money. The diffusion algorithm might produce a similar result to generative adversarial model but it works in a different way. First, we add the noise to each step of the image. However, AI remove this noise to recover the images in each step. If AI performs this process a lot of times, in the end, AI can generate the image from the noise. To explain it in a little bit more detail, the diffusion algorithm follows the assumption of the Markov chain. There are given past state and present state. Uh, but the future state only affects the present state. Any change in the state is not continuous. This procedure approach shows that each state we gradually add the noise, but if AI calculates inversely, AI can also the noise, remove the noise at each state. In the end, AI generates the images from the noise. For example, uh, in this image, the diffusion algorithm uh, removes the noise each state and it can 
complete the uh, images of uh, Homo Simpson images. Nowadays, uh, diffusion is getting a lot of attention in the generative AI field because this logic can be more can be applied more widely in various tasks. For example, in a model that creates the images from text, the AI is combined between the text interpretation model and diffusion model by using a large amount of data set with the images and text, we can teach the distance state between the image and text. As the result, the text provide the, by, provided by user uh, is turned into the image. For example, the above images are made by an algorithm called Glide. Uh, in this algorithm, users can edit the images uh, with the input sentences. After the you know AI draw the image of you know dog, you know wearing a hat and bow tie like that. Like this, AI can be applied to design the you know design the product or you know art creation activities in the future. Essentially. US CEO has also acknowledged the copyright of AI drone images. AI technology described before are now important in the copyright as well in this region. New York based artist Christina Kestanova has recently received the copyright of her comic book, Jaya of the Dawn, which is made by also AI. On the other hand, Steven Taylor's AI art, which is called a recent entrance to paradise, is rejected by USCO. Uh, this rejection case is uh, quite interesting. In the you know, next page, we will you know, see the discussion between the Taylor's and the uh, USCO's. USCO provides the uh, concrete reason that why uh, USCO rejected the Taylor's cases. Let's check a little bit more detail. Uh, let's see the USCO's rejection report. The USCO described the why they reject his cases uh, multiple times. Uh, also, Taylor claims the, some of his idea about his copyright for the reconstruction reconsideration of the history case because uh, uh, you know the reason why we see this one is that we need to understand why this case is rejected on november 3rd 2018 so yeah four years ago taylor submitted his application to register a copyright of his ai work he registered the computer generated work as a work for hire to the owner of creative machine. So creative machine is the you know, AI obvious. And Opis rejected his file because it lacks the human authorship necessary to the support of copyright claim. Taylor sent the reconsideration request and in September 23, you know, 2019, he said that human authorship requirement is unconstitutional and unsupported by either statute or case law. Opis rejected his first reconsideration, reconsideration request because uh, Opis said that it is a lack the required human authorship necessary to sustain a claim in copyright. Taylor did not provide any evidence on sufficient creative input or intervention by human author in the work. So Taylor actually you know, claims the second reconsideration in 2020. He said that there is a no binding authority that 
prohibits copyright for computer-generated work. Copyright law allows non-human entities to be authors under the work made for higher doctrine. So he keep claim that he hired the AI. <laughs> And OPS's new report said that copyright law only protects the fruit of the intellectual, intellectual level that are founded in the creative powers of the human mind. The law must either provide evidence that the work is the product of human authorship or convince the OPS to depart from a century of copyright jurisprudence. So also, you know, Taylor is talking about the, you know, the work and he hired a machine. About this argument, Office also refuted his claim. And this part is also very interesting to me. And I believe uh, you guys also uh, you know, are very interesting about this part. Because Office said that Taylor's work is clearly not a work made for hire as defined in the Copyright Act. The work is required to make for hire must be either prepared by an employee or by one or more parties who expressly agree in written instrument that the work is for hire. So Taylor's AI cannot give any expression about the written instrument. I think uh, that this is the you know, critical reason that why USC does not allow the copy. However, if uh, you know, AI can think and they can sign the agreement in the features, then this uh, claim can be a new argument. Uh, I, I'm not sure that you know Taylor will Taylor will send the his you know third request about uh, this copyright. But, you know, uh, compared to the uh, Taylor's case, Christina, you know, submit her application with a search as the Christina about her comic book. Also, Christina has the rights and permission. So I believe that, you know, USCO gives the copyright for this region. However, AI you know, can generate uh, billions of comic books very easily. So I'm not sure that you know, USCO uh, can handle you know, this uh, problem feature. Uh, for the summarize, the human authorship is uh, required to get the uh, you know, copyright. And Christina registered herself as the author of Jaya of the Dawn. And USCO allowed that AI as the tool and human is the author. And Taylor registered the AI, you know, as the author of the art. So USCO refused that there is a no creative contribution about the art. So these two cases uh, left some question. If you are the creator, how uh, you can protect the, your work, which is made by AI? Uh, if you are a lawyer, how can you protect your client? And if you are a public service, how can you classify that this should be approved or not? And there might be a lot of cases uh, after these two cases because this is uh, just uh, you know starting. Uh, now you know world is actually you know changing, and people is also currently defining the you know, creativity of the borderline between human and AI. And you might become a you know, Christina or Delos. However, one fact is that uh, we cannot roll back to this upcoming AI world. And thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me.